Well, it's a minute past, so let's get started. Welcome to Moxie Engage 1.0. I'm so excited. Um, this is our first virtual training for Engage. So thank you all so much for coming together. Um, everybody on this call is across Texas. So I'm Taylor Blissett. I'm the field marketing manager in Houston. And so if you're from Houston, hello. Thanks for joining. Um, we also have agents from our Austin Metro and our Dallas-Fort Worth Metro. So we're really excited to bring everyone together for a more localized approach to our Moxie training. Um, hopefully by now, um, if you don't know, your local marketing team is also visiting every office in your Metro this month to bring you some type of in-person Moxie training. So um, in some Metros, they're focused on websites and others, it's engaged, it might be both. Um, so if you haven't yet attended an in-person, I highly recommend that you might be here um, as a follow-up. Everybody's on kind of different learning scales. So my goal for you today is for you to leave um, with a better understanding of how Engage functions so that when marketing is in your office talking about Engage, you can have more specific questions and even maybe take a deeper dive into your account. Um, I want you to leave today with knowing what's available to you in Moxie Engage, not necessarily starting using it today because you're gonna see that there's some decisions that you need to make, um, especially if you're an InTouch user. So, um, so let's get started. Um, first, a couple of things, I have some housekeeping items. So this session is being recorded and I'll um, provide that recording after our call today. I'm gonna send an email with that link. I'm gonna send an email with slides that I go over. Um, half of the slides or half of the presentation um, today, I'm going to be in my uh, PowerPoint deck. The other half, I'm going to go live into the product most likely. And then um, for anybody who has very specific questions at the end, I can hang on and I can go live as well. Um, and then if you're familiar with Teams, please use the chat function to ask questions and I'll address those. Um, if it's related to the topic I'm on, I'll stop and I'll address it. If not, then I'll wait till the end. And then we can also do a live Q&A at the very end as well, like I said. So let's get started. Here is our agenda for today. I already mentioned we're going to spend a little bit of time in my deck, and then I will um, likely go live um, just so you can follow along and watch me click around um, the product. So let's talk about an overview of Moxie. Um, this slide talks about Moxie Engage, but let me take a second to talk about Moxie Works. We're all familiar with Moxie Present. If you've been with Coldwell Banker for a while, Moxie Present was only one of Moxie Works products. So we decided that we are changing our company pay our uh, company paid CRM system over to Moxie. And for the past seven or so years, it's been in, um, in touch with leader. So we're making that shift right now. Moxie Works is that parent company, and Moxie Works has a variety of products. So we've been familiar with Moxie Present. Today we're talking about Moxie Engage, and then there's also Press and Moxie website. Okay, so specifically Moxie Engage is their CRM system. It is now our company paid CRM system. Um, right now, you have access to both Moxie Engage and InTouch. For those of you who use the company paid version of InTouch, you have access until June 30th of this year. So we're less than three months um, until that access goes away. If you pay InTouch for their pro account, it means you're a paid user directly with Market Leader, your account will stay active with them and it will be up to you on if you're going to renew at a discounted rate or are you going to cancel your membership with them and then transfer over to Moxie and use what we're paying for for you, okay? Um, if you need help on that, if you don't know if you're a pro user, get with your marketing team. Um, like I said, I'm the marketing manager in Houston. Talia Vanderbelden. Vanderbelden is in Austin and Sherry Elbow is in Dallas, Fort Worth. We can help you figure that out, okay? So Moxie Engage is specifically the CRM system and these bullet points um, tell us that Moxie Engage has contact management in there. Um, it has some task recommendations. You can email from there. You can set up campaigns. If you are familiar with InTouch, I'm gonna reference that a lot. And there's campaigns, drip campaigns you can set your people up on. Um, we're gonna have that same functionality in Engage. There's also an MLS and integration, um, as well as some goal, goal setting. So we're gonna dive into some of these products. Now today you're on Moxie Engage 1.0. So what does that mean? That's just our way of dividing and conquering because Moxie Engage as a whole, if we talked to you about everything on one call, I think a lot of it 
you might, you might leave and forget half of it. So we've decided to break it up into two sessions just to give you some bite-sized pieces. Today, I'm going to get you set up because by default, your accounts are not activated. Now, they might be if you've already gone in there and done some steps, and they might be if you've gotten help from your SSA um, or if you've done it on your own. But if not, if you've been waiting for this type of training, I'm going to show you some screenshots of how to accomplish that. Okay. I'm also going to show you how you can migrate and upload your contacts, how you can customize your contacts and take advantage of the additional features that we get and engage, such as staying in contact with your people. You're going to see something that's called a sales flow, and it's going to be this single widget that you can track who you're marketing to, who your prospects are, who your active clients are in one little snapshot. And you'll be able to customize your contacts along the way. We'll organize them, we'll group them, and then I'll show you how you can set up your first campaign. If you've done some of these things and you're looking for a more advanced version, tomorrow is Engage 2.0. Same time, 2 o'clock, you can register on Sales Pro if you haven't already. That's going to dive deeper into some of the emails and campaigns and goal settings that you can play with and engage. Okay? And like I already mentioned, this is recorded uh, so that you can go back and watch my screen today, and then you'll have the recording to go and follow suit kind of on your own pace. Okay. So our initial setup in sync, I'm actually not going to jump you directly into engage. I'm going to talk about something that's on your desk profile manager. So when you go to mycvdesk.com, you have your headshot in the top right and you have your profile settings. Something that you need to know ahead of time um, is all of whenever you get a listing, that listing is funneled to coldwellbankerhomes.com. Well, when somebody inquires about that, that's a lead and you get that lead. Most of you right now are likely getting that lead sent to your InTouch account and either directly into InTouch or you set your InTouch account to then forward to you. Everybody's a little different. If you're deciding that you're going to go make the change to Moxie, we need to tell death that choice, okay? Um, so I know what I have on my screen might not make sense, but when you get the deck, what I want you to do is, let me do a little laser pointer. This line right here, my CB desk, go to your profile, go to my profile, lead settings. That is going to look like this right here, okay? This is the little top right corner of your desk. You hit your headshot, you hit my profile, then you're going to see all the tabs about me, contact info, office, social, lead settings. Lead settings is what you click on. And there's going to be in this green circle, preferred CRM. You're going to choose none, market leader, or moxie. And none would be if you're not, for some reason, don't want any leads coming to you. I don't recommend that. The second one, market leader, is going to be if you have decided you are going to remain with InTouch and not use moxie. The third option is Moxie Works or Moxie. That means you're going to make the shift. Moxie is going to become your new CRM system. So whenever you get a new lead, that lead will come to your email. And that email is going to be what email you sync with Moxie, which is going to be one of the steps we get to in just a minute. Okay. Um, so that needs to, to, to change if you plan on making the shift over to Moxie. The step I don't have a screenshot of here is if you make that change, you click Moxie, make sure you scroll down on that page and click Save Profile. If you don't do that, what you just changed will not be saved. Okay? You have questions on that, you can get with us offline. Um, so at the very bottom, I have a task item. If you're not doing it today, following along since I'm kind of uh, going through this quickly, just mark a reminder for yourself at some point before June 30th, but hopefully in the next couple of days while it's fresh on your mind to go in and make that selection. Okay. Um, another thing is, let's, we'll jump into your Moxie Works account, um, is your preferred name. So this is a screenshot. Whenever we, uh, whenever I go live and I go into Moxie Works, you're going to see my profile looks like this. I don't have a headshot loaded, but it, it'll have your headshot. It'll say your name. My name's Taylor Blissett. Um, all of your contact information, your name, your email, everything is funneling in your account. Everything is funneling from Desk Profile Manager, where we just were. So you're going to find that in Moxie, you can't make any edits to any of your contact information or anything. The one piece of information you can edit is your preferred name. And that would only apply if you have a legal name, but you go by a different name, like a nickname or a preferred name. Okay. 
I know that setting is in Deaf Profile Manager, but for some reason, Moxie was not able to pick that field up. So they've implemented the step I'm about to show you. So if you go, if your legal name is Robert, if you go by Bob and you want your marketing to be Bob, you need to make, go through these steps and make these changes. Okay. Your Moxie works account, there would be this pencil icon. You would click on it and you would see your first name, your last name, and then there would be nickname and the nickname display settings. You would type in what your preferred name or nickname would be. And then the drop down for the display settings would ask you, how do you want that to be displayed? So in my case, Taylor, and then um, I can choose, would it, would it show Taylor nickname Blissett or would it show nickname Blissett? Um, or I think it, there's even one that would ignore the nickname for some reason. So play with it if you if that applies to you. If you have a legal name, but you go by something different. And same thing, you would click save to make, make sure those changes get saved. One other item in your Moxie Works account is um, to delegate access to others in the company who might work in your account or might help you remotely. Um, so I recommend you make note as another task item to follow these steps on this slide, to delegate access to your SSA or SSAs, if you have two in your office, your field marketing manager, and your field marketing specialist. This will allow us to toggle into your account. One, as employees, our accounts are slightly different than yours, so we can't see everything or show you everything from our account. But two, if we're going in there and trying to replicate an issue that you have, or we're trying to help you with your contacts, it's just a lot easier for you if we are in your account helping you. So these steps will walk you through um, how you can delegate access. I have also asked the SSAs to start making these requests on their end. So if you haven't seen that come through from your SSA, you can go ahead and take the initiative and um, get that done. Okay. So now we would jump into Moxie Engage. So when I go live, I'll show you what this looks like. But from depth, Moxie Works tile. And then along the blue bar are all of Moxie Works products. So we see present, which we've already had and we are very familiar with. Engage, which is where we're spending time today. Um, my website, we also have Impress. And then there's um, two other um, drop down or choices that you can go into. Okay, so we're clicking Engage. And the very first step would be we need to sync a preferred email with Moxie. Now, again, if you don't see this screen for some reason, that means you've probably already synced um, and you've gone through these steps before. Mine's going to look a little different, my screenshot. I think it at first explains to you this process, and then you have to click continue in the bottom, and then you'll see, do you want to sync with Gmail, or do you want to sync with, market, or with um, Office 365 or O365? It will only allow you to sync with one email system. There's no right or wrong choice. It's just a matter of how you handle your email. So if you use our Codal Banker email that we provide you, cbunited or cbrealty.com, it would be easier if you did Office 365. But if you are one who pays for your own domain and you have your own email, branded email, and maybe you have that funneled over to Gmail, then it might make better sense for you to sync with Gmail. Okay, so it's very situational. If you're not sure which one to do, get with your marketing team and we can help guide you in the right direction based on what your situation is. I will note that at this time, at least I'm not aware of, there is no switching back and forth to either one. It's a one-time setup, one-time sync with an email. Okay, and what this is going to do, just to not alarm you when we go into your actual engage um, account later is it's going to sync any contacts you have in that email system into engage any calendar tasks or reminders into engage so it's really a truly a sync back and forth between the two if you add a person in your email it's going to automatically add them into engage and vice versa pretty cool once you make that decision and you click uh, sync or continue <clears throat> the second step is the one you see on the right and it is asking you to create a GCI goal. So hopefully by now, and we're in April, hopefully by now you have some goals set for yourself for the year. Um, you can also edit this amount at any given time, but to get started, you have to put a number in. 
So drop in a number of what you would like to make this year, and then it will proceed to step number three. Again, if you haven't already completed this step, okay? Step number three is called a data migration. I'm gonna jump ahead for just a second, so in case you're following along, you can see what the pop-up looks like. It'll say, migrate your CRM data to Moxie Engage. This is a new feature that just went live last week or two weeks ago. So if you played in Moxie a while ago, you probably didn't see this. But what this is asking or telling you is that Moxie will connect with either from these two dropdowns, Market Leader, which is InTouch, or Zap, if you happen to be a Zap user, that's another CRM we used to have. Moxie will connect with either of those, not both, one or the other, and literally migrate over your contacts into your Engage account. Because we know that a lot of you have so many contacts that it'd be easier if it just automatically migrated versus you exporting and then importing and then customizing and doing all the things that you've already done in InTouch in or Zap. So you don't have to do this right away, but I will say that if you make one of these choices, I want to do market leader or zap, or I don't want to do this at all and I want to opt out, you will not have the option to go back and do this again. So if you're not ready to migrate for any reason, make sure you click, click skip for now in the bottom right, and this will just keep popping up every day you log in to Moxie Engage. Um, the only reason you might opt out is that if any of you are brand new to Codal Banker on this phone call, you probably haven't even touched in, in touch. And in that case, you could opt out because you don't have any people in in touch. Now, if you do or you're not sure, skip for now, mark it as a task item to go in and audit what you have in in touch, see if you want to migrate them over. Okay. So I'm going to go live now into. Uh, Moxie Engage and just follow through um, with some of the rest of the items I am going to talk about. Every now and then I will toggle back and forth to my deck just so you can see some things I'm referencing. Okay, so it took me to my main Moxie Works account and it's loading along the top. I'm going to click in Engage and I've already activated all of my stuff so that's why I wanted to show you screenshots because I can't replicate those same pop-ups. Okay. So once this loads, we're first going to talk about the navigation that you have within Engage. Because um, you're going to have a main dashboard, and then you're going to have all the other subcategories. Let me go in as an agent. So along this gray bar, if you can see my little circle where my mouse is, this gray bar, those are all the sections within Moxie. By default, we're on our main dashboard. Okay, so I'm going to go over our dashboard first, and then I'll dive into a few of these. So on our main dashboard, this is a like a home page or a little um, overview of widgets that we have available to us. Okay, so those widgets are in these white squares, okay, and they're organized over here on the right under this. Uh, over here on the right where you can do like a click and drag and you can reorganize them. So I'm going to talk you through some of these widgets and then I'm going to give you some best practices. So for example, what is stay in flow? Stay in flow and you likely, I'll back up for a second, if you've synced um, with your email, it's probably already going to have some people added into your database here. Um, if you have hundreds of people, you might see five, and then later you might see those hundreds because it'll take a little bit of time. So if you say, oh, I didn't know I added Taylor into my database because you haven't done a manual upload, it's likely because you um, synced your email and you had contacts there, or you did your in-touch data migration, and it's pulling people in here as well. So stay in flow is going to be a daily snippet of five of your contacts that Moxie is suggesting that you stay in contact with, okay? So Moxie Engage is built specifically for real estate, but more so to stay in contact with your sphere. It wants you to make sure you're staying in contact in a variety of ways and not letting these people fall through the cracks. So it's going to give you five people a day, and it will prompt you, like mine's only showing one, just based on the settings I've set these people up on. And you're probably wondering, well, how do I have a person show up here? Or how do I avoid having a person show up here? Maybe they're not a client or they would never be a client, like a, like a fellow real estate agent, right? 
um, I'll show you how to do all of those, all of those customizations. But this is going to show you the five people each day, and it's going to prompt you to reach out. And so you can click the drop down on how you're going to reach out. Are you going to send them an email, set them up on something called Neighborhood News, we'll learn about later, set them up on a campaign. Um, it, it wants you to take action on getting in touch with that person. If you've done one of those things, you can click Mark Done, and it'll have you log your activity. It'll timestamp it, and it'll say, what did you do on this date? So if you call them, it'll have the date. And then in your rotation, that person will come up again when it's time for them to come up. How does the system know that? There's a gears icon in this particular widget, and you can specify if you want your people to rotate through every 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days. The settings apply across the board. It's not by person, it's, it's everybody, okay? So if I want everybody to circulate through every 90 days, that's how it would work. Now, this is only as good as what you're updating, right? Like these people could stay, these five people could stay here and you don't ever update them, nothing will ever really change. And it, it, the system's not working to your advantage. So it's really a matter of if you're coming in, your the goal for yourself, I'm going to stay in contact with my sphere and my leads and my much better in 2022. This is one of the ways that you can do that. You also can specify based on some customizations we'll make contact later, you can specify what type of label or category is going to show up in your stay and flow. For example, you're going to see in a little bit, I can label somebody as a collaborator, and that means it will skip this stay and flow setting. They would never show up here. So I've been telling agents when doing my office training is this would be an ideal label for other agents, whether it's Coldwell Banker or not, any agent that you have, because they're licensed, they're never going to become a client, right? Now, maybe you want to keep in contact with them for other reasons. Sure, you can leave them in your stay and flow. But if not, you can label them as a collaborator, and they will not show up as low-hanging fruit for who you want to do business with. Um, all, the other, all of the others, I would suggest that they stay in your rotation. It's going to take some time. Play with this. Come in here daily. See how things are working. Um, without having like active campaigns and emails going out, and then you'll be able to decide on how you want to do some of these settings, okay? The next widget is an activity feed, and that's just going to show you what you have active. So I'm in my, my own account. I haven't toggled into an agent account yet, and I've used myself as my guinea pig. I've set myself up on some of these items. I've, I've created saved searches for myself, which are like listing alerts. I've set myself up on neighborhood news so I can see everything that's funneling out. Okay. This would be for everybody, all your contacts you have receiving something. I know it's just showing my name here, but it would be anybody who has a recent activity. There's a to-do list. Um, this would be a manual um, to-do list of my tasks. So I created this set up sellers on a campaign, set up buyers on a campaign. So that next time I come in to engage, if I'm looking for, okay, what do I need to do right here in this moment? to, again, make sure I don't let anybody fall through the cracks. I've set myself up these two tasks. So I have sellers. Um, I'm going to turn off anything I have with them in, in, in touch. And I'm going to turn that on over in Moxie Engage. And then I would do a check mark that that's completed. And then I could do the same for buyers. Maybe the buyers, that would be, I need to set them up on a saved search. And again, I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. There's also transaction tasks. And that's going to come into if you have anybody um, that you've marked as being an active client and you'll have um, a transaction in process, it's going to give you some tasks that you need to do. Okay? I don't have an active MLS ID in my account. Therefore, I don't have any transactions. I haven't labeled anybody as a prospect or active um, label, which I'll show you here in a second. So mine is empty at the moment. You also have a calendar sync. Again, it's coming over from your um, Outlook calendar or your Gmail calendar, whichever email you synced, as well as any, like if you put in people's birthdays or anniversaries, that will show up here as well. Your sales flow, this is a big one and we'll talk about it today. And I think there's a little bit of a deeper dive even into the 2.0 class. Your sales flow is how you label some of these people as these are the people you are actively working with. So in my slide deck, I'm going to jump over there for a second. I want to show you some, just some definitions. Um, so you can see my screenshot here. The marketing zone. These are people that are really just 
truly you're trying, trying to stay in front of and trying to win their business. Maybe it's, it's a lead. Maybe it's people in your farm. Maybe it's people, um, a past client that you're just trying to stay in front of them so that you don't later find out that, oh, I totally forgot you're in the business and they use someone else. Okay, so you can set them up on a, like a, in the marketing zone and you can even set them up on a marketing plan, which means you would have tasks that would say, okay, on this date, call this person. On this date, set them up on a campaign. On this date, the system will do all of that for you. So if you're using the system and you're coming in here and you're labeling these people, they'll show up like this screenshot. This person has three people that they're generally marketing to. Then you can, what I'm saying is you can upgrade that person. So if that person then becomes a pretty viable, warm prospect, and you can see the second definition, they've expressed interest in working with you, and most likely they might go in under contract in some regard in the next 12 months, right? Maybe it's sooner. Then you could upgrade them to prospect. Um, and then you can upgrade them into an active, so active buyers, active people you're going on listing appointments with, and then you can change them to pending, and that will then tie to a transaction you have from your MLS feed. Um, and then you can mark, there doesn't show it on here because they're not in the sales flow, but it will ask you, do you want to close this transaction? And then it will kind of like reset their account and you can then start them over if you wish. So really the idea of this, and this is totally optional if you want to use this widget, but the idea is at any given time, you can get a visual of who you have in the rotation and, oh yeah, I need to, call, I need to contact these people. Okay. I'm going to jump back into mine. Um, so I, just through training, I have set up four people into the marketing zone. Notice my cursor, when I hover over it, I can actually click in and it will jump me to my database. It will show me who these, like what four people I have labeled in the, my marketing zone to simplify your day so that you can say, okay, my goal, I'm going to do those five uh, contacts in the same flow. And then the next thing on my to-do list this morning is to come in here and touch base with these people. Or let me look at my analytics. Let me see if they're opening things they're getting from me, right? You can set kind of what kind of processes and procedures you want. So I can see I've, I've played with setting these four people up. I'm going to go back. Um, I just taught this class this morning in one of my offices. And an agent was like, oh my goodness, I want this to be front and center when I log in. So I said, great. That's why you have these over here where you can click and drag. So you can take sales flow and drag it to the top. Or you could drag it to stay in flow. So that way, the two items are right there front and center. Every time you log in, there's the five people you need to reach out to. And then here's your sales flow. Let me take a look. Make sure everyone's on pace with what they need to do. All right. I'm going to keep okay, going. Taylor, sorry, I think Marion has yeah. her hand up. I just want to make oh. sure if she did have a question. <laughs> yes, go when, ahead. When, Let me see if I can unmute you. Thank you. Uh, my question was, when new leads are coming in from Moxie uh, or our websites, whatever, mm -hmm. they're going to go into that top flow, the workflow, right? That is a Along good Along with the numbers uh, that we've already put in there? That's a good question. Let me ask our leads team, um, when somebody comes in as a lead, if they're going to automatically be categorized in any sort of way, or if that's something you're still going to need to do. I don't know that answer. Um, I'll definitely find out for you. Okay. Because what I've, what I've been understanding is that they would show up in that section, but they wouldn't necessarily be categorized yet. But I don't know. Right. They're not going to be categorized, but they, I don't know if they're going to show up in any in some sort of way in your sales flow. I don't know, but I'll I'll find out before I email everybody the follow up. Great, thank you. Yeah. But would question. that mean that we would have to add them? Or no. No. So the very first step that was talking about your lead settings. If you change your CRM to Moxie, that's going to avoid you having to add that lead into Moxie. That will already be done. I think what she's asking is it going to automatically put them into one of these zones? That I don't know. Okay. 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 Well, I mean it. I would think it would go into the work flow zone, but for the flow zone. <laughs> well, there's two. So there's stay and flow. The top one, the stay and flow, the one so that we would know that we needed to contact them and hopefully it would put in the information that 
is coming over. Okay, so here's a good point that you can decide if you want to do this in those settings for stay and flow. You can actually check the box. If somebody is uncategorized, so if we find out that the lead will automatically be added to your database, but they are, they're not going to be categorized on your behalf, then you could play it safe and you could say, I even want uncategorized people to show up in my stay and flow. Ah. Uh -huh. So you could do that. Good question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't see Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, and then keep scrolling down on the dashboard. The uh, you also have a snippet of your goals completion. What we also have goals in the um, top navigation bar, but again, the point of the dashboard is just a quick overlook of, of what you have working. So this would show you your completion tied to your transactions, which tied to the MLS. I don't have that synced in mind, so mine's going to show zero forever. Um, but you can take a look at that. And then it's going to also pull in your listings, active pendings, and sold as well. Um, so that's probably lower priority. Maybe you have stay and flow, sales flow, and goals at the top three. Again, it's totally your choice on what you want that dashboard to look like. Okay. Um, so let's jump into people. So the people tab up here. You have three drop downs when you hover over people. The first one is an overview, which I really, I don't find myself going here very often because it's just gonna show you this, the sales flow again. So if you're utilizing the dashboard and you're seeing it there, you're gonna see the same thing. It just tells you, it also shows you who, um, like what records you recently viewed, some recommended actions um, that are separate from the stay and flow and then any new contacts you've added. So. Again, you're going to find what you jump to the most. Back on people, the second option, my people, the, this is your database. Okay. So after you've completed the one time migration um, from InTouch or Zap, people are going to be coming into here. And after that, you can update your database, either a bulk import, so if you have a CSV file, or adding new people one at a time. And both are very realistic, right? If you have a list that you want to transfer from some other source, <clears throat> then you want to do that. Or if you have a list that you obtain from somebody or a list like from open house leads or whatever, you could always bulk import. Or if you maintain your database by adding just a new person here and there as you meet them, then you have that option. So you could add a person by clicking add people, um, which would just do like a single one-off add. So you could just and if you don't, didn't do your data migration or if you know that you're not in your own database, you could go ahead and add yourself in here, okay? Unlike InTouch, you can add somebody without any form of contact information. InTouch required an email, a phone number, or a mailing address. Moxie doesn't, okay? That way you at least have them in here. You can put them into groups. You could do all these other things, and so then it buys you time to try to find their contact information. I've already added myself, but you could go through the steps familiarize yourself with the fields that are in here. The other option is to bulk import. And to bulk import, um, let me get back to where I was for consistency. The gear icon along the gray bar at the top on the far right, you're going to have, let me cancel, you're going to have an import Outlook CSV. A CSV is a CSV. It doesn't have to be one from Outlook. Um, but I will say that Moxie has a very specific CSV that they prefer. Um, I have tried it with just having a couple of fields, my own CSV template, and it did not import. So if you have your own CSV, you can attempt it. You could come in here, click Import CSV select the file and try to import it. Um, if it doesn't work for you, then in my follow-up email that I send, I'll send you Moxie preferred CSV. If y'all don't know a quick tip on how to convert one CSV into like a preferred template, you just copy the column in your file into the matching column in the template file. Just copy uh, one column at a time Keep the original template the same. So if there's a whole column that you don't have anything for, don't delete it or hide it or anything like that. 
just paste in the columns that you have on your file, and that can be how you say that. If you need help on that, you can let me know. Um, a couple of other things. When you do a bulk import, so if I do select a file and I upload my master contacts, I have two people on this list. Oh, that's one. I did not prep my Moxie required CSV. Okay, so what's going to happen is when you import your two people, or I mean, sorry, when you import your CSV, it's not going to ask you what group you want to put those people in. Now, if you're uploading 500 people at a time, you might not want them to all be in one group. So that's not really a big deal. But if you're uploading 10 people from an open house you had this past weekend, you would, might prefer that you want them all in the same group. So how can we work around that? What's gonna happen is, let's pretend I did just import my two people. Okay, how do I find them? What do I do? I can go and look to see what groups I have. What's gonna happen is it will import these people and it's going to label it as a group called imported on. It's gonna have a date and a timestamp, okay? Um, that's just the way it is. So how do we find those people? Okay, now that you know that's what it's gonna do, you can filter by group, okay? If you didn't see me do that, I did filters, and I can go to my groups, and I could choose, now I've deleted all of the people in my imported um, groups, but you would choose one of that one imported on, what's today? April 13th at 2.38 p.m. You could click on it, click apply, and it'll have everybody you just imported, okay? To change that to the group you want, you could say select all, see that, select all, and then add to, add to group, and then just check the group that you want that, that person to be in. Okay, so my question is, I have over like 1100 and they were in groups, but they all exported into just all of them. They're not in groups now. Does that mean I have to go through every one of them and group them? Was that from InTouch? Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. so two things here. Did you do the data migration? Yes. Okay, are you seeing that they did not in these little white boxes per person, it's not labeling them as the groups you had in InTouch? Yes, they are, but they're not in all together. They're like spread out through the thousand. They're not together in groups. Um, I was showing her the filtering option. Maybe that's what, Virginia, I'm gonna check in your account right now. Yeah, like where you can filter by groups. Views. Yeah. yeah. So what's going to happen, Virginia, is if like you're like in my account, I have 35 people. So if you said you had how many? A thousand. So yours would show us a thousand people here. And what you see by default, yes, it's going to be any and everybody. So I can see that I have Amanda in this employee group. I have Amy in employee and Realogy group. I'm going to see anything and everybody. OK, if I want to narrow down that search, that's the steps I was just on where you would say filter. And then my groups, and you could say, okay, I want to see, I have 11 people in my CBR agent group. Click apply. And now I'll, I get a very fine tuned view at who's in that group. Does that help? And then I could select all and send them a group, whatever. Yes. So then you can say, right. So let's say for this, my group of my agents, I can say select all, add to. Maybe I want to add them to, um, to like a farm or leads or like in my case, because I'm an employee, mine's different, like a training group. And maybe I'll then later activate a campaign that's related to training. So I could do that. And now I'm going to see all of these people are going to be a part of multiple groups. Okay. So now I see Cindy, she was only under CBR, but now she's also in the training group. Any other questions on that before I keep going? Okay, if, if you're not comfortable with this, practice with just uploading yourself or upload um, a list like with your marketing team, a part of it. If you don't want to play with your contacts quite yet, um, 
to avoid any confusion on their end, play with people who like we're training on this, use us as our is your guinea pig so you can really get to know the system very well. I'll also say that based on your choice when you set up Gmail versus um, Office 365, you could upload your people into that email system and it will automatically sync over to Moxie. And I know Gmail catches duplicates really easily. Um, I have found that Moxie is not catching duplicates. And so if you're doing lots of different lists here and there, it's going to be kind of confusing as well, while you're still in learning mode. Um, I know Gmail is really good at catching that. So again, kind of play with that, maybe just doing one con contact at a time as opposed to trying to do all of, you know, thousand people in, in both and see what happens. Trial and error. <laughs> okay, so let's spend some time um, going into a contact record. I'm going to use myself. So I can use this search bar as well to um, find people. I'm going to open up my record just by clicking on my name. And I'm going to walk you through some of the things that you can do. Um, actually, I used myself earlier. Let me back up for a second. Sorry. So the very first thing that we can do is we can, I talked about the sales flow. We can categorize these people to say, do I want them in my sales flow? Let me pick somebody I don't think I've done this for. Done it for her. Sorry, training on this back to back. I forget who I've uh, set and not set. Let's see. I have not done Caitlin. Okay, so when you're in a person's contact record, it's going to say, is this person ready for a change? Do you want to label them as a client or a non-client? And it says right here, client will be added to sales flow. Sales flow is the um, marketing is those four steps, those zones, on if you want them to show up there, okay? It will then also funnel to your stay in the know as well, okay? So you can play with these. You can kind of go forwards and backwards. So if I say Caitlin is, is a client, I can label her as she, do I just want to put her on the general marketing plan, which would put her in that first step, that marketing zone? Or is she an active prospect? Is she a seller or a buyer? I can click one. And it will automatically label her and update her. Okay, so now, and you can see your zone at the top, the same kind of like the same view we saw with the sales flow earlier on our dashboard. She's showing up in prospects. So later, if I go back to my dashboard, y'all saw that I had four marketing, zero prospects, zero active, zero pending. Now I'm going to have four marketing, one prospect. And then this is how I can, what I was saying earlier is upgrade her. Do I want to move her to the active zone? Okay, now if you do that, you move somebody to an active zone, in this point in time, you can't move them backwards. You would have to finish out the process, get to a closed transaction, close the transaction, and then you can start over. That's what I have found. Um, and so what happened was the system, based on how you label the person, are they marketing, are they prospect, are they active, the system will give you tasks to help you stay in contact and actively work with this person. Doesn't mean you have to do all of them. Maybe you have already done some of them. So I labeled her the active seller. So it's saying, suggesting, schedule a pre-listing interview. Have I already done that? If so, I can mark it as done. Have I actually gone on the pre-listing interview? I can mark it as done. I can also change the date or edit some of these things as well. So again, it's trying to keep you from letting some of these people fall through the cracks. Really good for new to the business agents and really good for those of you who are working your tails off and really need like that extra set of hands and you just don't have it. This is going to keep you, I feel like, pretty organized doing, running your business. Okay, so y'all can go in there and play with those. Again, play with yourself if needed. Don't do it to somebody specific. Um, what you'll find as well is, and let me jump to my slides real quick. What I want to point out is, we, so this is my screenshot when you get the slides, the categorized section. If you label somebody as the non-client, the option on the right, that means they are not going to come up in your sales flow. Okay, so they're not going to fall under marketing or active or pending or uh, those four zones. Okay, if you choose non-client, 
it's going to say, is this person a, per a personal contact or a collaborator? Or do you want to remove them from Engage entirely? Especially if you did the data migration and you're like, I don't remember this person. or I really don't know this person. You can remove them from your database. Personal collaborator were two options for your stay and flow settings. Do you want these people to fall into that 30 or 60 or 90 day rotation of who you want to stay in contact with? You can toggle those on or off. So again, a collaborator might be a colleague, another agent, maybe one of your vendors that y'all work with, title company reps. Label them as a collaborator, and then you can go into your stay and flow settings and say, do I want them to fall into my daily five people that I see? Okay, so very, very customizable. Any questions on that? <clears throat> okay, I'm going to keep going. So I am in this person's contact record, okay? I took care of that top section. Do I want to label them as a client or non-client? I'm going to move to the gray bars on the left. So this person's profile, if I have imported or filled out a lot of this information, I will see it here. I can click the edit button if I need to go in and add or edit or remove any contact information. There's a note section that if I want to start logging maybe certain things about them or conversations I've had, I can do that here. There's an activity section. This is going to show you, so I added Caitlin to my sphere back in March, and then today, four minutes ago, I added her as a seller. Okay, so it's starting to put her into that process. It's also going to show if I have her receiving any sort of email or neighborhood news or anything like that. So it's just to see, okay, good, Caitlin's getting something from me. Or no, I added her as a seller, but I haven't sent her anything. I need to do that. Saves and saves. We're going to spend some time here next. So saves and saves are where you can create saved searches or listing alerts for your contacts. So what I want you to do is another task guide, if you're taking notes, is Spend some time in the next couple of days going back into InTouch or even your MLS. If you have people set up on saved searches, I want you to decide if you want to pull those saved searches over into Moxie. If so, this is where you're going to create that saved search for each person. Um, I, In the office I was in this morning, some agents said, I know exactly who I have on saved searches. And some said, no, I have quite a few running. I need to go in and do an audit. So... My first suggestion, what I said earlier, is use yourself as a, get, as a guinea pig. Open up your own contact record. Come in here to Save and Save. Create a search. Set some filters, even if it's not perfect. I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to set some searches. You have, you can do it by an address. You could just do it by a zip code if you want. You could set price limitations, bed bath count, filters. So do you want to show them active, sold, everything? Do you want pendings included, coming soon's included? Do you want open houses? Um, you can set all of these different filters, okay? You click apply. You also have very specific drawing guidelines or radius guidelines. Like you can come in here and do a quick draw. Slowing down on me, sorry, y'all. You can do a quick draw. And you could do something very specific, okay? When you're done, you can click Email Settings, and it's going to show you what's the name of the search for this person. You can do multiple searches per person. Who is it going to? An intro email that will say, I've created a safe search for you in this area. Take a look. Feel free to make changes. They can make changes to the search alert. How often do they want to get this search alert? And then if for some reason, like it's a really active buyer and they, they're desperate to find what's coming on ASAP, you can actually set hourly. And then if you want, you can do this label of, I still want them to get an email, even if there's no updates in that area. If not, and you set hourly and there's nothing active for a day, they're not going to get that hourly email. Okay. So set yourself up on this. You would save and send, and you'll get that in your inbox in just a few minutes. Okay, it took me like 10 minutes earlier to get mine. Now you can see and feel and experience what it's like um, as the recipient. And then your client can open up each listing. And when they open, they click on a listing in this alert, it's going to take them over to your Moxie website. So if you've been in our Moxie website class or if you've been on your website, 
you'll see that there's that's tied to the MLS as well. They can click on that and it will take you to your Moxie website. They can then favorite any of those properties as well. And you get, you're on the back end of your CRM, you'll be able to see what they're favoriting. Okay, I'm gonna keep on going. Subscriptions is one that um, if you're interested in learning about, which I highly recommend you do, join the 2.0 class tomorrow. Groups, it seems like you would edit your groups in the profile edit, but you don't, you do it down here. So I showed you based on Virginia's question, how you can bulk update people. If you're in this person's contact record and you go, oh, she's not in this group, I need to edit. And then I can change her to another group or add another group to her profile. And then if you want to delete this person, um, or you can send a copy of the profile to somebody if you can. Okay, so that's the contact record. Um, so now let's look at how we can, we've already kind of talked about how you can organize your people. You can search by filters, you could edit the group. The one thing I want to point out, especially for those of you who are doing your data migration quickly, is if you think you're going to take advantage of the sales flow, instead of going in one by one by one and doing the non-client versus the client, option click categorize wizard this is going to show you anybody who's uncategorized and you can make those selections all in one fail swoop so i can see here this person's uncategorized are they a client non-client and i can go through what all of those options are on that um, page that i with the definitions that i showed you so this will save you some time and especially with, with your first uh, data migration or import, okay? I'm gonna keep on going. Your calendar view I mentioned is gonna sync with your email calendar. Um, it's also going to tie over, as you can see, any birthdays, anniversary, house anniversaries. All of that is in a person's contact record. So you would add those dates and then they will populate here. So if you wanna tag them on Facebook, send them a message, text them, call them, whatever you want. Campaigns. We're going to end on campaigns for the next seven minutes. I'll try to talk faster. Um, campaigns are drip campaigns that you can start sending out to your people. We do not currently have a one-for-one -one match in InTouch. Okay, InTouch has a ton of campaigns. Right now in Engage, last I counted, we had 21 or 22 campaigns. Okay, so by no means am I recommending that you go ahead and turn off everything in InTouch and transfer it over into Engage, I don't recommend that. I recommend you taking a look at what campaigns are currently set up to help you decide, am I ready to make this uh, change, okay? So a quick get starting guide with campaigns is what we see on this screen. I just click campaigns and it dropped me into my campaigns dashboard. I can see these little tiles that tell me I personally have 14 campaigns in my dashboard. Out of those 14, nine, are awaiting setup. So I've added them to my dashboard, but I have not activated them. Three of them are active or running. I've paused none of them, and I have archived or deleted two of them. Because then once I went into them, I'm like, I don't really like that one. I never will like that one, so I archived, okay? Um, you can click on these to see which ones that applies to, or you can scroll down and you can start browsing ones that you've added to your dashboard. If this is your first time in Engage, you're gonna have none in your dashboard. How do you get them into your dashboard? You click top right, add from library. What you're gonna essentially be doing is going shopping in the library and adding these campaigns into your dashboard, okay? I think that just to avoid having all of them be on your dashboard and you not really know or prefer that, you have to come shop for them, free shopping, <laughs> add them to your dashboard. So I clicked add from library and I can start taking a look in all caps. It's kind of categorized and then it's going to say what that is. So there's a holiday one for spring holidays. If I want to preview this before I add it to my dashboard, I can. I can click preview and I can see how many emails are in this campaign, what holidays are in this campaign, when they're going to go out, all of that. I clicked it, but it's not running. Okay, there we go. I can say, or the other button is you can click add to campaigns and that would literally drop it into your dashboard. Okay, so you can come in here, you can view all of these. If you like this one, you could click add to campaigns from here, or if you want to kind of knock out a few at a time, you can go back to library, bottom left, 
then you can say holiday spring 2022 as a campaign. Seller Revitalize, because yeah, I have a couple of seller leads. I want to promote Revitalize too as a campaign. So you can start kind of, again, shopping, adding these to your cart, if you will, to drop them into that dashboard. When you're done, click close. And then it'll take a minute, but they will start popping up here under your campaign. Okay. Um, to activate a campaign, I'm going to take holiday spring 2022. Now, mine says copy one because I demoed this one. Oops, I demoed this one earlier today. I'm going to click on it. There's only two steps you have to complete, so it's very simple. While that runs, you can see that it's saying awaiting setup. Okay, so that's my trigger to know nobody's getting this at this point in time. So it's literally just sitting here in my dashboard. If I want people to start getting this, I need to click on it. And then my two steps are going to show add recipients. Who do I want to get this campaign? And then do I want to edit anything in the schedule, like remove an email for some reason? Okay, so I'm going to click set up recipients on the, on the right. And then add recipients. I can add people one by one by one. I can also add groups. So if you're taking advantage of the group feature, you can say, I want anybody in this group to get this campaign. You can click add. And then every single person will populate here. You'll want to scroll down because if notice, if I say I'm ready to run it, my run campaign button is not active. I have to save my changes. Now it jumped me to step number two. Technically, step number two is already done for you because it's a pre-built campaign. We're trying to save you time. So you could run this if you want, or you could click edit schedule if for some reason you want, maybe you think these spring holidays are just too many. So maybe you want to come in and delete Earth Day for some reason. You can do that. You can edit schedule, remove that particular email, and then come in and run it, okay? When you click run campaign, it will bring you back to this screen, and then you would now have one running campaign right here. Okay, so that's the quick overview for the sake of Moxie Engage 1.0. The other thing is you're going to slowly start seeing as you start building these out, you're going to see analytics in a much easier way than what we saw with InTouch. So um, right now, a lot of mine are blank because I have 11 that are waiting set up. And my other ones, if I go spend the time going down, I've sent them all to myself and I likely haven't opened them. So I would not be a good example to show you that. Um, but you can see the analytics over time. All right. The final step, and I'm so sorry I'm pushing three o'clock, but if you still have time, I'll keep on talking, is in the gray dashboard or the gray um, navigation bar along the top where we earlier we had the import button whenever we were in the people tab. Any tab you're on, if you click the gears icon, you will always have an engage settings option. I recommend you come in here and spend some time deciding on some of these settings. So for example, if you get uh, Zillow Tech Connect leads, I don't know too much about that, but if you do, you can set that up and that would come here as well. And then you can also say those leads, I want them to get an auto response email. I want them to automatically get neighborhood news. Um, if that doesn't apply to you, if you don't get this, if you don't do this tech, uh, Zillow Tech Connect, then you can still look at these other settings, okay? Um, so come in here and play with those. And there's really not a whole lot that you can mess up um, unless you put somebody on a campaign you didn't intend to put them on. But like I said, the best option is to um, set yourself up on that. Okay. So if you have any additional questions, like I said, feel free to reach out. I'm going to stick around so I can answer some questions live if y'all want. If you feel like you're ready for the overview of Moxie 2.0, Moxie Engage 2.0, that's taking place tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Um, like I mentioned, you can also register in Sales Pro. After next week, next week is some national training, so we're going to skip our local training. But then the following week, the last week in April, pretty much for the foreseeable future, we're going to have these four trainings. Um, plus a advanced website training every single week. Okay, so those are all on Sales Pro. And then in the final deck that I'm going to send you, these two links, there's Moxie Engage tutorials that I think you would um, get a big benefit from. And then if you are a team lead, 
Notice I didn't talk about any Teams related settings, but there are some team functionalities in Engage that we did not have with InTouch. So I have a tutorial there as well. If, um, and if, if you need some one-on-one -on -one help, get with your field marketing manager. So other than that, I will stick around for questions. And if you want to give us some feedback with this QR code, just scan it with your camera. We are building these trainings from scratch. So we're looking for if you feel like this 1.0 was great, let us know. If you feel like it was too much, if you feel like we could have covered more, let us know. Um, but to tweak these to best do what you're looking for to help you feel comfortable using Boxy. So if you um, wouldn't mind giving us feedback, I'd love to hear it. We'll take everything into consideration. Otherwise, uh, the floor is y'all's if you have any questions. Okay. Well, I'll leave the screen up if anybody wants to scan the QR code. Otherwise, y'all have a fabulous Wednesday afternoon. Um, if you join the 2.0 tomorrow, I will be on observing as well. I will not be teaching that one. So I will see y'all there. All right. Y'all have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye.